Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Um, let's begin. ELE424, analog electronics 1, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor. We've done the slides on the device. Uh, we will now look at the DC analysis. Uh, this is still under video pack for MOSFET. I am Wan Fazli Dahanim Abdullah. I'm from the Faculty of Electrical Engineering, UITM Shahalam. The topics covered in MOSFET DC analysis set 2 uh, will first go through the introduction. Then we'll have a look at the NMOS common source circuit and then PMOS common source circuit. And then we'll have a look at design examples. Okay, I have uh, purposely separated these design examples into one subsection because um, uh, the approach uh, in uh, design questions would require a higher order of uh, thinking. And then we'll have a look at load line. For the introduction, we'll first look at the um, uh, syllabus contents of MOSFET DC analysis and then we'll look at why DC biasing. It's the same reason as BJT but just as a refresher um, uh, look at the topic, we'll have a look at this and then we'll look at MOSFET and other components. DC analysis of MOSFET in small signal amplifiers, we now start analyzing and designing the DC biasing of MOS transistor circuits. Okay, we've done MOSFET device, and now we're looking at DC analysis. And this determines the Q point of MOSFET in small signal amplifiers. There are many application circuits that can be constructed using MOSFETs, but for the purpose of this course, ELE 424, the syllabus only covers small signal amplifiers that will assist in the continuation in um, uh, continuing subjects uh, such as ELE 426. We will also look at mainly the common source circuit and the continuation of it will be in the next courses. Why is DC biasing required? Okay. As we stated in earlier topics, an amplifier system is able to amplify an AC input signal and MOSFET can function as an amplifying device. Um, but the approach to um, uh, small signal AC analysis is through the superposition approach where we do the B, uh, DC biasing analysis first, then we go into AC analysis. So the biasing circuit is required to ensure that the MOSFET operates at the intended Q point in the output characteristics. So before doing AC analysis, we need to bias the MOSFET and do the necessary uh, DC analysis first. In most of the circuits presented in this chapter, Okay, resistors are used uh, in the schematics and it is used in conjunction with the MOS transistors. But in a real MOSFET integrated circuit, okay, uh, we'll uh, touch uh, later what an integrated circuit is. However, the resistors are generally replaced by other MOSFETs. So the circuit is composed entirely of MOSFET devices. This means that in general, a MOSFET device um, can um, can be uh, designed such that it functions as a resistor as well as other components such as capacitors and inductors. So in general, a MOSFET device requires a much smaller area than a resistor on an integrated circuit on the substrate. So uh, it makes it um, favorable to do to use MOSFETs in integrated circuits. Integrated circuit refers to a circuit that is entirely built on a common substrate and it is miniaturized, so meaning that it is really small. Okay, now if, you, if you've seen this kind of components in the labs, this is an individually uh, packaged um, MOSFET with three terminals, uh, gate, drain and source. But if you see uh, integrated circuits that look like this, this is an OPAM, okay, operational amplifier. In the circuit, if you lift uh, off this packaging at the top here, you will see um, uh, a die, uh, a reticle, um, where at the die inside, uh, on top of it, uh, is the construction of uh, many MOSFETs, perhaps hundreds, uh, uh, on the same substrate. Okay, and that is what you call the integrated circuit. All the resistors are all on the same die itself. Okay, so in design, if designing circuits on PCB with MOSFETs as individually packaged components, components may be as individually packaged components like this. Okay, meaning that if you put it on PCB, you may have something that looks like this. You have the MOSFET, you have the capacitors all on the PCB. But if MOSFET exists in integrated circuits like this, other components can be constructed using the MOSFET construction itself, either resistors, capacitors or inductors. But then uh, once it's uh, in an IC, when you put it on a PCB, okay, uh, 
the transistors are already constructed inside the IC, so it's function it functions just as one IC with all the uh, MOSFET transistors in it. All right. Okay, so that th this part here was all just general knowledge so that you understand how MOSFETs are being used uh, in the real world, in the real design um, circuits. So now let's have a look at the common source circuit. I mentioned just now about real world circuits. These are also real circuits, but uh, sometimes uh, it's easier uh, as an introduction for us to simplify it for you uh, so that uh, you have real understanding of the fundamentals of what goes on behind the design of the circuits. Okay. So now let's have a look at the NMOS common source circuit first. So this is a basic circuit and we'll use it as an example. One of the basic uh, MOSFET circuit configurations is called the common source circuit. So this is the drain, gate and source. Okay, and the source is connected um, close to the, the um, ground. Okay, so it's that's why it's called the common source circuit. Just like the common emitter that we did in BJT. Okay, or common base or common collector. So uh, this is a common source circuit and this NMOS as you can see is an NMOS enhancement mode device. Okay, so we have R1, R2, RD, and then we have VGS and VDS. Now I can uh, modify this circuit and add an, uh, an ex uh, external RD here, uh, external RS here. Okay, but we'll uh, see to that later. It's not um, anything that is new. Okay, the approach is still the same. So the source terminal is at ground potential and is common to both the input and output portions of the circuit. So the input portion of the circuit is between gate and source. The output portion of the circuit is between drain and source. And this coupling capacitor is the same as BJT. The coupling capacitor CC acts as an open circuit to DC, but it allows the signal voltage to be coupled to the gate of the MOSFET. And the purpose of CC is to allow AC pass through, but not uh, DC, because DC coming from um, earlier uh, circuit module, before this amplifier, okay, we do not want that DC to inter interfere with the DC biasing of this um, MOSFET. Okay, so this is the DC equivalent circuit. Capacitor's been replaced with an open circuit. Since the gate current into the transistor is zero, okay, if you remember when we did MOSFET device, okay, we said that between the gate and the substrate is like a capacitor and therefore this, this section here is an insulator, therefore it does not draw any current, okay. So the gate current into the transistor is zero. The voltage at the gate VG, okay, here the voltage here, you can find it from a voltage divider because if it, this does not uh, draw any current it is as though r1 and r2 are in series by right the definition of in series is that is that is that the, at the terminal there can only be um, a connection between two components here you have a connection to the gate but because the gate current is zero we say that r1 and r2 can be treated as in series therefore we can use voltage divider rule and if i use voltage divider rule of vg here Okay, uh, for a total of voltage drop across VDD, I get VG is equals to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times VDD. And VG uh, in this case is VGS because VS is zero. So assuming that VGS is greater than VTN, threshold voltage, and that VDS is also greater than VGS minus VTN, which is a VDS set, and that the transistor is biased in the saturation region, the drain current is given to be this. Okay, we said assumed. What happens that if it doesn't? What happens if VGS is greater than VTN, but VDS is not greater than VDS set? Well, if that's the case, then we'll have to find the drain current using the triode um, expression. Okay, and the drain to source voltage uh, using Ohm's law. Okay, if we have, if we know ID, we can use Ohm's law to find uh, VDS. Okay, from VDD minus uh, VD. VDD minus VD, which would give me uh, the voltage drop across RD, which is also equals to ID RD. But VD and VDS is the same because VS is uh, zero. So VDS is VD minus zero. Okay. So I get this expression for um, the drain to source voltage. Okay. 
continuation, still looking at the common source, we had assumed that it was functioning in saturation region to find ID. Okay. With ID, we can use Ohm's law to give as VD, hence VDS. We then check backwards because we assumed, just, okay, we only assumed that it was uh, functioning in saturation region. We then check backwards with VDS that we found from uh, using Ohm's law. If the MOSFET is operating in saturation region by comparing it with VGS minus VTN. If we find that the VDS is indeed greater than VGS minus VTN, then we can say that our analysis is uh, valid, uh, the assumption is verified. If it is not, then it will be in non-saturation region and the relevant expression in the triode region will have to be used. So the power dissipated in the transistor, okay, I can also ask, we can also find the transistor power in the, dis, uh, in the transistor since there is no gate current, so we are only um, uh, considering ID. Uh, is simply given by ID times VDS. Alright, now let's have a look at an example. We're ready for an example now. Let's calculate ID and VDS and find the power dissipated in the transistor given that R1 is 30 kilo ohm, R2 is 20 kilo ohms, RD is 20 kilo ohms with VDD 5 volts. Uh, given that the threshold voltage is 1 volt and uh, the transconductance parameter Kn is 0 0.1 milliamp per volt squared. So uh, Vtn and Kn are values that are uh, uh, obtained uh, from the transconductance parameter from either uh, from the combination of the process uh, fabrication uh, side as well as the design of the transistor or the sizing of the transistor. Okay, so now we are assuming that this is all settled, the fabrication and the uh, design and the sizes are all settled. But what we want to do is just we just want to find what ID and VDS is. Okay, as usual, I'll show it really small here, just so that you see what is involved in, a, uh, in our calculation. Okay, when you do uh, pen and paper exams. Okay, also, if this is just to show that um, the, uh, the flow of thought that is involved, if you're looking at this intuitively uh, instead of doing it on a simulator. Alright, so you have uh, VGS. This is the part where I consider VGS and then ID and then I look at VDS and then I check the assumption because I first I find VGS from voltage divider rule then I assume that it was in saturation and then I find VDS from Ohm's law I check back uh, the assumption whether it is in saturation or not and uh, if it's correct I can continue with finding the uh, power dissipated in the transistor okay let's have a look at the bigger view of this transistor so as usual we, I would usually draw back so that I know what's being labeled where and I can find VGS because I know that IG is equals to zero and R1 is in series with R2 as was mentioned just now. And if I do voltage divider rule here, R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times VDD, I put in the values for the resistance times 5, I get VG to be 2 volts. And because VS is zero, therefore VGS is 2 minus zero which is equals to 2 volts. And then I find ID, knowing that VGS is zero, I am assuming it to be in saturation. I will check it later. Okay, so I find ID, which is equal to 0 0.1 milliamp per volt squared times two for VGS minus one for VTN squared. And we get this to be 0 0.1 milliamp. Having found ID to be 0 0.1 milliamp, I can find VDS by doing Ohm's law where Ohm's law across RD is VDD minus VD. This is the voltage drop across RD. Okay, it's not just VDD, it's not just VD, don't forget, because this is a voltage uh, across the uh, component RD, not, uh, not voltage at a point. So it's voltage across the component RD, which is equals to IR, and I is ID and R is RD. So I get this value VD to be equal to 3 volts. And because Vs is 0, so it's uh, Vds is 3 minus 0 equals to 3 volts. Having found that, now I know Vds because just now we don't know. We, we don't even know how to start. So sometimes when you don't know how to start, you have to assume. Okay, But after some assuming, after making that assumption, we need to check. So VGS set is going to be equals to VGS minus VTN. We found VGS just now from the voltage divider rule. It's 2 minus 1 equals to 1 volt. And VDS we found just now was 3 volts. So 3 is greater than 1. 
and therefore our analysis is valid. And the power dissipation in the transistor is ID versus VDS. ID was found to be 0 0.1 milliamp. VDS was found to be 3 volts. So the transistor dissipates 0 0.3 milliwatt. Okay. And this is the Q point for this spicing circuit. The Q point is IDQ equals to 0 0.1 milliamp and VDSQ is equals to 3 volts. Okay, if you look at this flow, it's actually not difficult because what is required is simply ohm's law and voltage across the device. If at all, what is new here is just the usage of the uh, drain current where you have to decide whether it's going to be in triode or in uh, saturation. So this is an uh, exercise problem, which I'm not going to solve here because I've done this example. But if you read this question, it says uh, it gives you... Um, uh, parameters VTN and KN and it gives you uh, VDD, R1, R2, RD. So it says find ID, VJS and VDS. Y you can imagine that the process would still be the same. Okay, you have to find VGS okay, that is suitable for the circuit that is presented in front of you and you have to think how to find uh, VGS for that particular circuit. So there's, there's no point actually in memorizing everything uh, in terms of formulas because what you need to do is actually to just hold on to these basic concepts of voltage divider rule or KVL. Okay, look at the circuit and decide how to find VGS and then after that you assume whether it is um, um, uh, in triode or in saturation and also usually we would assume it to be in saturation and then we check. Okay. Um, and then we'll find VDS and then, uh, sorry, uh, after we find ID, we, we assume we find ID, then we find VDS and then we check our assumption. So this is summarizing what is what the approach is going to be for all our uh, DC analysis here. So when the bias condition may not be obvious, which means that we have to do an initial guess, we assume that the transistor is biased in the saturation region, in which case VGS is greater than VTN and VDS is greater than VDS set. We don't know yet whether it's true or not, but we assume first. And then we analyze the circuit using saturation current voltage relations. After that, we evaluate the resulting bias condition of the transistor. Because now, having the uh, uh, done the analysis, when we have the values of VGS and VDS in our hands, uh, we can check if uh, VDS is greater or not greater than VDS set. If the assumed parameter values in step 1 are valid, then the initial assumption is correct. But if it is not, okay, if the initial assumption is proved incorrect, then a new assumption must be made and the circuit reanalyzed and step 3 must be repeated. Alright, so now we're leaving NMOS common source circuit. Let's have a look at PMOS common source circuit. This is a PMOS common source circuit. Okay, but with PMOS, if you remember, the source is at the top and the drain is at the bottom. Okay, we have gate here. And this this diagram here is a is straight away the DC equivalent circuit of a common source circuit with a PMOS. I know that this is a PMOS because of the symbol, the arrow is at the top and entering the uh, capacitance structure. The source terminal here, the source terminal is tied to VDD. Okay. But this is a common source circuit. So how is it that VDD is a ground? Well, what happens is that um, in AC analysis, uh, VDD becomes the signal ground in the AC equivalent circuit. That's the terminology common source uh, still applies to the circuit. Okay, Because VDD becomes ground when it is AC uh, equivalent circuit. So VG again is given by voltage divider because the current it does is zero. So yeah, I have VG which is equals to R2 divided by R1 plus R2 times VDD. But now I'm uh, looking at VSG. So now VSG is VS minus VG. And VS, if it is connected directly to VDD here, becomes VDD minus VG. So don't forget this when you are handling uh, PMOS. So just like the NMOS uh, common source circuit for the PMOS common source circuit, we will also assume the saturation region operation. So assuming that VSG is greater than the um, 
uh, modulus of VTP and that VSD is greater than VSD set which is VSG plus VTP uh, and that the transistor is biased in the saturation region okay the drain current is just like um, uh, the NMOS saturation region uh, you have ID equals to KP uh, bracket VSG plus VTP squared okay note that because of the uh, change in um, uh, source and gate here we have considered this to be a positive sign but actually VTP that comes from the uh, spice model parameter of the device uh, would be a negative value so eventually you'd still be um, deducting uh, the uh, threshold voltage uh, if, you're, if you're considering modulus then it's it will be deducting the value okay and the drain to source voltage using ohm's law once you know vg okay once you know vg and you know uh, id okay you know vsg you know vg then you can do um uh, ohm's law here where you find vd and vd is equals to id rd so vsd is equals to vdd minus uh, vd which is equals to idrd so idrd refers to vd um, vs here uh, is connected to vdd so to find vsd it's vdd minus vd which is idrd so now let's do an example the common source circuit with pmos okay look at if you look at this configuration okay the drain is connected closer to the ground uh, rd uh, still exists just as in the nmos uh, common source circuit but now rd is um, closer to the ground as well uh, source is connected to vdd in this case so these are the values for r1 r2 and rd 50k 50k and 7.5 kilo ohm vdd is 5 volts vtp is given to be negative 0 0.8 volts and kp is uh, 0 0.2 milliamp per volt squared in this case but uh, this uh, example is purposely selected to show what happens when the assumption is wrong i'm going to show what happens if you th assume that it's going to be in saturation but later on you find out that it's not so let's look at how it looks like okay uh, this is again a small version just to see uh, what is involved okay again still nothing complicated it's just ohm's law and standard uh, equations so the first part is me finding vsg and then i assume that uh, drain current is in saturation and then i find vsd and then i check my assumption and i find that it does not uh, fulfill the condition for saturation so next um uh, assumption is that it uh, functions in triode and then i check it again and i find that it's correct Okay, so let's have a look bit by bit. So um, this is um, again voltage divider rule. The same case as the NMOS circuit, we do a voltage divider rule to find VG because R1 and R2 is treated as series because IG is zero. So you can do a voltage divider rule between R2 and R1 uh, for the total voltage drop of VDD. So I find uh, VG, which is the voltage drop across R2, to be 2.5 volts. Okay. And if I do VSG, I will have to find VDD minus VG. Okay, So VS is connected to VDD, so it's 5 volts minus 2.5 equal, equal to 2.5 volts. And then I find ID. Okay, Assuming saturation, I check it later what's going to happen. So I find that ID is 0 0.578 milliamps. Okay, so this one just now was uh, I mentioned that VSG uh, it becomes a plus VTP, but because VTP is a negative value, so eventually you still minus it. And then once I find ID, I find VSD. To find VSD is just Ohm's law across RD. Okay, so it's VD minus zero ID RD is going to be four point three three five. So VSD is going to be VS minus VD, where VS is the voltage connected to VDD, and VD is the uh, voltage drop across uh, uh, resistor RD. So it's 5 minus 4.335 equals to 0 0.665 volts. So checking our assumption, VSD set is going to be VSG plus VTP. So VSG is 2.5, VTP is minus negative uh, 0 0.8. So I get it to be 1.7 volts. But just now when we calculated VSD, we found it to be 0 0.665. And VSD 0 0.665 is less than 1.7 volts so which means pmos in this case is not operating in saturation region therefore we need to uh, do another assumption and this assumption is going to be that the drain current will be uh, based on the triode expression okay so that the, uh, 
meaning that we assume that it is uh, operating in triode region. So uh, yes, the equation in the triode region is a bit more complicated because it becomes a quadratic equation. And um, we also know that VSD is equals to IDD minus RD. So we're going to, because now our uh, expression for ID, initially if it was in saturation, it did not have this term uh, VSD. But now we need to have VSD in this uh, equation because it is in triode. And VSD is VS minus VD where Vs is Vdd, and Vd is the voltage drop IDRD, which is Vd minus zero, okay? So, uh, putting all this into here, okay, putting all this into here, uh, we find an expression of quadratic equation of Id, and uh, you can just use your calculator, you solve Id is equals to 0 0.515 milliamp, and Vsd is equals to 1.4 volts. So, 1.4 is less than 1.7 volts, yes, it's correct, it's in triode region. So, uh, uh, because this is a quadratic equation, actually there is a second solution, but the value does not tell you with our assumption, so uh, we ignore that um, uh, uh, value. Okay, so checking our assumption just now, PM PMOS operates in triode region, and this is our Q point in the triode region, which is IDQ equals to 0 0.515 milliamp and VSDQ equals to 1.4 volts. Okay, let's have a look at design examples. Okay, in design examples, uh, there are things that you may have to work backwards. So there are things that you may have to assume. Okay, and then uh, you check back your assumptions. Okay. So the first uh, design example here is an NMOS common source circuit. Now we have uh, dual supply. RG is given, 50 kilo ohm, but RD and RS is not given. Okay, so what is given? We'll have a look. The objective here is to design a MOSFET circuit biased with both positive and negative voltages to meet a set of specifications. So meaning there's going to be a set of specification. Let's see what the specification is. The circuit configuration to be designed is as shown. Okay. In terms of uh, circuit architecture, it is given. So that's that's good. Design the circuit such that IDQ is equals to 0 0.5 milliamp and VDSQ equals to 4 volts. So this is what is happening. Now the Q point is given but you need to find the value of the resistance that would bias the MOSFET to get this Q point. Okay. So our choices are given to us is that first we need to use standard resistors. Standard resistors are to be used in the final design. As you all know, when you go to the labs, uh, there are standard value resistors, okay, that, the color-coded um, packaging. Okay, we'll have to choose from there. Meaning that first we'll do our calculation, find the value of the resistor, and then we'll find what's uh, closest match to the value that we find. Okay, and uh, this transistor is also given with a nominal parameter of Kn, which is equals to 80 microamp per volt squared. Now, Kn here is a small k, so meaning that this is the uh, process uh, uh, parameter. And WL, which is the transistor size, equals to 6.2F, uh, 2.5, and VTN is 1.2 volts. Okay, this uh, transistor is available and we will be using this. So what it's saying is that our task is to find RD and RS to achieve the Q point that is given. Okay, RG is given at 50 kilo ohm. Alright, this is what's involved. First, uh, we assume saturation so that we can find VGS because here we find we know ID. So uh, initially we um, uh, find VGS from voltage divider rule to find and then to find ID. But here we ID is given as a spec. Okay, then we find uh, VGS and then from VGS we find VS to find RS and then uh, from there as well we find VD and then RD. And then after that when we find values of RS and RD that we want, we'll check our assumption back. Was it correct that it is in saturation? After that once we are happy, we can now choose standard values which is closest to what we have calculated and we see whether um, this uh, trade-off can be tolerated or not. Okay, let's have a look uh, at a bigger view. So the first is that transistor uh, process uh, parameter and sizes are given. So we can find the transconductor parameter, which is the capital KN, which is uh, KN prime times W over 2L. So KN prime is 0 0.08 over 2 uh, times 6.25. This was 80 mic micro. It was micro, so we're going to give our... Uh, 
value for, uh, in terms of milli so it becomes 0 0.08 here so it's 0 0.25 milliamp per volt squared then we need to find VGS because we know ID okay uh, we will assume saturation and ID is equals to KN VGS minus VTN squared um, bring the KN here uh, get rid of the square so we have a square root here so vgs is equals to square root id over kn plus vtn and we know that idq is given to be 0 0.5 mm uh, we have calculated kn to be 0 0.25 mm per volt squared and we have also been given vtn which is equals to 1.2 volts so from here vgs is found to be 2.614 volts so we know vgs is 2.614 volts now let's look at uh, what VS is because if we know what VS is then we can do Ohm's law across RS here okay so um, we know that um, IG is equals to zero and um, because of that the voltage drop across this 50 kilo ohm is going to be zero because uh, V equals to IR I zero so V here is going to be zero it's going to to, to ground so um, VGS which is equals to VG minus VS is zero minus 2.614 volts so VS is going to be uh, um, negative 2.614 volts sorry uh, I said just now uh, VG is going to be uh, zero but VGS is going to be 2.614 volts so when we re rearrange VS here we bring VGS here so um, VS is going to be a negative value okay and if you look at this this is a dual supply so this is 5 volts and negative 5 volts okay so if we do Ohm's law across RS if this is negative 2.614 and this is negative 5 um, okay the voltage drop across here is going to be um, uh, negative 2.614 minus negative 5 okay is equals to ir which is is times rs but we know that id is equals to is because ig is equals to zero so all of id goes down to is okay and uh, id is 0 0.5 milliam given in the question um, replacing vdd uh, negative here v negative here is to be a uh, negative 5 volts and vs to be negative 2.614 volts into this equation here so we get rs to be for 0.77 kilo ohms and then we need to find rd vd and then rd okay uh, then uh, we get we are given vdsq to be 4 volts so vds is equals to vd minus vs okay vd is going to be equals to vds plus vs so vds is given to be 4 volts and vs is a negative value of 2.614 so we get vd to be 1.386 volts and if i do ohm's law across rd it will be vdd minus vd equals to idrd and i'll get the value rd equals to 7.23 kilo ohms and now that I have all the values, we can check assumptions. In fact, we can check assumptions uh, a little bit earlier on just now, but it's okay. We'll check now. So VDS set is equals to VGS minus VTN. So it's 2.614 minus 1.2, which is equals to 1.414 volts. But VDSQ is given to be 4 volts. So the transistor is in saturation because VDS is greater than VDS set. Our assumption is verified and our analysis is valid. So now we found um, our calculated values of RS and RD to be 4.77 and 7.23 kilo ohm. We need to find standard resistor values. Okay, we know that in the labs, in the um, uh, color coded resistor, uh, color coded package resistors, they are they only have uh, standard resistor values. So I have um, uh, I pasted the table here. Okay, so the closest value to 4.77 kilo ohm is 4.7 kilo ohms and the closest to 7.3 kilo ohms is 7.5 kilo ohms okay now I maybe I just want to check if I'm doing my design okay if I do choose 4.7 instead of 4.77 because there is no standard resistor value at 4.77 and if I do choose RD at 7.5 instead of 7.23 what uh, is the um, variation that I get what is the trade-off in the Q point so if using this value okay going back and doing the analysis again to find VGS I get VGS equals to 2.622 volts um, from um, the um, voltage divider rule and then I find IDQ which is 0 0.506 uh, milliamp instead of 0 0.5 milliamps and VDSQ is 3.83 volts instead of 4 volts so the trade-off is just that 
um, for the convenience of the standard uh, resistance values, uh, we get only less than 5% of specification. So um, you have to decide whether it's acceptable or not. And it's most, in most cases, it's ac acceptable. Okay, it's going to be as a small a variation as this. All right, another example. Okay, what if we have a PMOS common source circuit with four resistors here? Okay, just now our first example just now was an MOS and it had it had R one, R two, and um, R D. Okay, but now if this is a PMOS, so we, the source is connected at the top. Uh, drain is connected uh, lower so you have and you have an you have four resistance here rs and rd and again uh you know compared to bjt uh, we had to check assumption whether uh, it would draw current or not then you have a seven in equivalent circuit or the proximate method if you remember bjt what what, what went on okay but in this case we don't have to because we know the ig zero so we can straight away say that r1 and r2 is as though it is in series and we can use voltage divider rule to find vg so anyway this design example says design a circuit with p channel mosfet that is biased with both uh, negative and positive supply voltages 2.5 and negative 2.5 that contains a source resistor rs here to meet a set of specifications and the sort of set of specifications the idq is 100 microamps vsdq because this is a pmos vsdq is 3 volts and vrs here is given to be 0 0.8 volts note that vrs is the voltage across the resistor source resistor rs the value of the larger bias resistor either r1 or r2 is to be 200 kilo ohms uh, and uh, the choices that we have is that we have a transistor with nominal parameter values of kp equals to 100 microamp per volt squared and that vtp uh, because this is a PMOS, is negative 0.4 volts and this is available and that the conduction parameter KP here may vary by 5 uh, positive to negative 5%. Now let's see what happens if there is process variation. So first we assume saturation and, uh, uh, and we use ID in the saturation form formula. So I'm, I'm just, uh, this time I'm not doing it on uh, handwritten. Um, I'll just uh, snapshot from the text. Now this uh, Neiman does a good coverage of uh, MOSFET. Please do have a look at the textbook. Assuming that the transistor is biased in the saturation region, we have IDQ equals to KP VSG plus VTP squared. So we're going to assume saturation. But because we know IDQ, what we don't know is VSG, we will rearrange it to get VSG to be 1.4 volts. And then we check our saturation assumption because we know ID, oh, sorry, we know VSG and we know VSD and we know VTP. So checking uh, straight away the assumption. So VSDQ is given to be 3 volts. And with VSG at 1.4 volts, we have 1.4 uh, plus VTP, which is negative 0 0.4. So VSD set is 1 volts. Okay. So at, uh, at the Q point, um, of given uh, 3 volts, uh, we can say that the transistor is uh, operating in the saturation region. So this assumption is verified. Now the voltage at the gate, okay, with respect to the ground potential, the voltage at the gate here, with respect to great uh, ground potential, can be found from Vg um, equals to... Uh, for, you can find VG from VSG, where VSG is VS minus VG, and that we know that this is VS minus VG, but VS is not VDD because there is an RS here, right? So we know that VRS is VDD minus VS. So rearranging for the term VS, where VS is going to be equals to VDD minus VRS, we replace it in here, and we have this expression here, where VG is equals to 0 0.3 volts. And from here, we can decide R1 and R2 because the question says one of the, the larger resistor, either R1 or R2, has to be 200 kilo ohms. Okay. So deciding uh, whether R1 is bigger or R2 is bigger, we need to have some basis uh, in our decision there. And we find, and when we find that, we can find the current in one resistor so that the other resistor can be found using Ohm's law. So let's look at VG. VG is 0 0.3 volts. If VG is 0 0.3 volts and this is equally uh, distributed between 2.5 and negative 
if um, Vg is equals to 0 volts, then we can say that the voltage drop across R2 and R1 is the same. But in this case, um, Vg is greater than 0. Okay, So we can say that uh, the voltage drop across R2 is bigger. So uh, since ID is the same, so we can say that R2 will be the larger of the two bias resistors. So we can set R2 equals to 200 kilo ohm. Okay, And the current through R2 is then... Um, Using Ohm's law, I bias would be equals to Vg minus uh, Vdd negative divided by R2. And that's just Ohm's law. Okay, so it would be 0 0.3 uh, minus negative 2.5 divided by 200 kilo ohms. So we've not added the kilo here because we are going to straight away factor in the milli in the current of I bias, which is equals to 0 0.014 milliamps. Okay, so uh, now that we know that uh, what I bias is, and because R1 and R2 is acting as though it is in series with each other, we can find R1 using Ohm's law. So since the current through R1 is the same, we can find the value of R1 to be um, V, uh, VDD positive, which is 2.5 volts, and we know that VG is 0 0.3, and we just found that I bias is 0 0.014 milliamp that goes through R2. Uh, R2, which yields uh, R1 to be uh, 157 kilo ohms. And now that we have uh, the values that we need, we can find RS using Ohm's law because the source resistor value is from, found from uh, VRS. Well, actually, we could have found this earlier because VRS is given 0 0.8 and IDQ is given at um, 0 0.1 uh, milliamp. Okay, so RS... Uh, is uh, 8 kilo ohms okay and um, finding vd from vsd now we've had, we need to find vd and it's the same treatment okay because vd uh, we can find from vsd equals to vs minus vd uh, but vs is something that you can find from vrs which is given 0 0.8 volts so vrs is vdd minus vs you're rearranging um, finding the value of vs here in the expression of vdd and vrs we can replace it into this expression and rearranging we can find an expression of vd vd which is equals to the positive vdd minus vrs minus vsd which is equals to 2.5 minus 0 0.8 minus 3 which is equals to negative 1.3 volts and the drain resistor uh, value is found to be uh, vd minus uh, vdd negative which is negative 1.3 minus uh, negative 2.5 divided by 0 0.1 so rd is found to be 12 kilo ohms so again uh, don't worry about this negative values of the voltage at a point because when you find that the voltage across the resistor is still going to be positive because of the notations okay trade-offs so what happens if kp varies five percent with val values found for rs rd r1 and r2 the resulting variation vs GQ, IDQ, and VSDQ can also be found with this variation. So if the conductance parameter KP varies by 5%, the quiescent drain current, quiescent drain current, and the uh, quiescent drain source, source to drain voltage VSD will change. And using the resistor value found, um, we find the following variation. So again, the following variation is all less than 5%, even though KP varies about 5%, and that's good. Okay, so this is just a, an example, a longer example, which is a more realistic example, which requires a design uh, approach. So now before we wrap off uh, DC analysis, let's just have a look at common source load line. Okay, you can do a Kirchhoff's voltage law equation around the output put loop with IDS and VDS, and it will give the load line just as an in BJT. So if I do a KVL at the output loop here, I get VDS is equals to VDD minus IDRD. Okay, this example here came from the first example of our NMOS common source circuit. So I can get this expression of Y equals to MX plus C. My Y axis is going to be ID and my X is going to be VDS. And I can draw this load line superimposed onto the uh, output characteristics. And I can have this uh, um, diagram this plot so now let's have a look at this plot okay so following the load line established okay, if vgs is less than vtn id is zero and the transistor isn't cut off here okay now as vgs 
becomes just greater than VTN, the transistor turns on and is biased in the saturation region. Okay. Because this is what we are doing here is that we are moving along the load line here for the given RD. So as VJS increases, the Q point moves up the load line. And if um, the Q point keeps on increasing for uh, increasing VJS, uh, meaning that the load line intersects at, at a higher point of VGS, Q point here, you'll reach to a transition point. Now, the transition point is the boundary between the saturation and non-saturation regions and is defined as, defined as the point where VDS uh, is equals to VDS set, which is equals to VGS minus VTN. So, as VGS increases above the transition point value, now uh, the transistor becomes biased in the non-saturation region um, based on this load line. Okay, let's have a quick example of the transition point. Determine the transition point parameters for the common source circuit. Okay, this was in just the earlier circuit that we used, so everything has been calculated there. Okay, and uh, this is uh, just the amount of work that had to be done. So first, we need to calculate what VDS set is, what VGS is, what ID is, so that we can uh, determine what the transition point is. So at the transition point, we know that VDS is equals to VDS set is equals to VGS minus VTN but we don't know what VGS uh, is yet um, for the load line that is superimposed onto the output characteristics okay so uh, if I use Ohm's law I get VDS which is equals to VD minus VS which is equals to VDD minus IDRD minus zero I've just written it in blue to show that VS is uh, zero and I assume uh, saturation region current okay because we are assuming at the transition point it is still in saturation and I can rearrange this, okay, I can put 3, the expression for ID, uh, and combine uh, equation 1 and 2, okay. So, e combining all this, I get this um, quadratic equation, of which I can rearrange and write it in a quadratic equation form, where my X is going to be VGS minus VTN, okay. So, I'll solve this quadratic equation, I get the solution for the uh, subject of the quadratic equation, which is VGS minus VTN, is going to be equals to 1.35 volts. But I know that VTN is 1 volt. Okay, and so VGS is 2.35 volts. So corresponding to ID, uh, if I put VGS is equals to 3.5 volts, ID is going to be 0 0.182 milliamp. So what are this, all these values saying? What it's saying is that for the given load line RD, if VGS is less than 2.35 volts, the transistor is in saturation because it's uh, the line, the output characteristic line, the horizontal line below. Okay, But if VGS is greater than 2.35, the transistor is in non-saturation. So the transition point occurs at ID equals to 0 0.182 milliamp at VDS equals to 1.35 volts Q point when it intercepts with uh, VGS equals to 2.35 volts for that particular load line. So summarizing approach to MOSFET DC analysis, uh, have a look. The textbook covers this quite nicely. Uh, it tells you that when you have a situation where the bias is not that clear, um, we have to assume saturation and then we do our necessary calculation and then we have to check our assumption. If the assumption is not correct, we have to make another assumption and then check again to verify the assumption. Okay. So we're done for this uh, session. Uh, the next video will be MOSFET AC analysis for common source circuits. Thank you. Assalamualaikum.